Are you wondering how to make the most of your day when you're visiting Busch Gardens Tampa? Or what about how to save money at the park? Or when is the best time to ride Iron Gwazi? Welcome to Theme Park Predictions and my ultimate guide to Busch Gardens Tampa. Where you're going to learn everything you need to know about this must visit park. Starting off, when should you arrive? Now, I always recommend getting to a theme park early before they open. This is going to help you get ahead of the crowds and get in some rides on the roller coasters and other attractions. So I recommend arriving at the parking tolls 45 minutes before opening. Should you buy a quick queue? Busch Gardens Tampa offers some very high capacity roller coasters. So if you are visiting during the week, I personally would not purchase one. Unless of course it's around the holidays or spring break. And as for the weekends, I would not purchase a quick queue until you're in the park and you notice the lines getting really long. And that ties in with my next recommendation. Download the Busch Gardens app. The app is easy to use and you get to view show times, wait times, and most importantly, the app offers a great map of the park. Trust me, this will come in handy. Purchase your tickets online. Seriously, never purchase your tickets at the front gate. Go to the Busch Gardens website or the app to purchase your tickets there. And you're going to see all sorts of ticket options, including one day tickets, annual passes, ticket bundles with SeaWorld Orlando, and the nearby Adventure Island Water Park. Preferred parking. Busch Gardens parking lot is located across the street from the park. So you're gonna have to take a tram that's gonna drop you off at the park entrance. You can see here where the general parking is located compared to the location where the preferred parking is. You will not have to take a tram when you park in preferred parking. But just note that on busy days and weekends, if you're not there right around park opening, preferred parking might be sold out. Are you traveling with your pet? If so, Busch Gardens Tampa offers really nice on-site indoor kennels that are located at the front of the main parking lot across from the first tram stop. Now, let's talk about the things that you're visiting Busch Gardens Tampa to experience. And first up are the top five best non-coaster rides at Busch Gardens Tampa. The Serengeti Express. Not only is this a great way to get around this massive park, but if you ride the train from the Nairobi station to the Stanleyville station, you're going to experience the best views of the beautiful Serengeti Safari. Now here's another tip. If you plan on taking photos or videos of the safari or just want to see the animals, then be sure to sit on the far left side of the train. Falcon's Fury, this 335 foot tall freestanding sky jump freefall tower is for the bravest thrill seekers out there. Not only will you get to ride the tallest attraction at Busch Gardens, you also get to look straight down as you freefall back down to earth. Stanley Falls Flume. Now every park should have a classic log flume in their lineup of attractions, and sadly they do not. But Stanley Falls is a must ride if you enjoy getting a little bit wet. Congo River Rapids. You and 11 other riders will get to experience the park's best water ride that may get you a little bit wet or possibly drenched. The Sky Ride. When open is the perfect way to travel around the park. Plus, you get to take in views of the safari, the coasters, and other sites that Busch Gardens offers. Now let's take a minute and talk about Busch Gardens' newest ride, the Serengeti Flyer. This is a must ride and is the largest ride like it in the entire world. The views that you get of the park while riding it are legit awesome. My biggest tip for you is if you're riding it in the morning before lunchtime, be sure to sit on the side facing Kumba and not the front of the park. That way, you're not looking up into the sun as you're riding the ride. Trust me, it's not very pleasant. Now let's talk about the five not to be missed Busch Gardens Tampa exhibits. My own bee reserve. The amazing thing about this exhibit is that as soon as you enter it, you feel like you're really in the wild with gorillas. Trust me, it's awesome. The Jungala Tiger Exhibits. You are going to find a few great areas where you can see the tigers, including a great pop-up window for kids and adults to get a very up-close view of these beautiful animals. 
The Asian elephants. This is always a great place to take a break and watch these massive creatures do elephant things. You cannot miss Cheetah Run, a wonderful exhibit that offers some great views of the world's fastest land animal. The Edge of Africa. This exhibit is filled with dozens of different types of animals from all around Africa, and this is an absolute must-see. Plus, offers a great shortcut if you're trying to get from Montu to Kumba. Where to eat? I highly recommend eating at the Zambia Smokehouse. By far, this is the best place to eat at the park. And you could not go wrong with the brisket and seasoned waffle fries. The Dragon Fire Grill and Pub is where you're going to find a great variety of food that's located indoors. Trust me, the AC in this place is on point. And finally, Chick-fil-A. Now I know a lot of you do love Chick-fil-A and if you're craving it when you're at Busch Gardens Tampa, then you can enjoy it at the park. But I personally recommend eating at one of the other restaurants in the park, but that's just me. Is the all-day dining plan worth it? If you plan on being at the park long enough to eat at least two meals, then yes. With the dining plan, you receive an entree, side, or dessert, and a non-alcoholic drink. You can also get a meal every 90 minutes. For reference, each meal at the park with the soda would average around $25 per person. And if you are looking for the best place to grab an adult beverage, then look no further than the Giraffe Bar. This bar offers panoramic indoor and outdoor views of the beautiful Serengeti Plain. When is the best time to visit? Busch Gardens Tampa is open 365 days a year, which makes planning to this amazing park very easy. But just like most theme parks, the weekends will always be a little bit more crowded than the weekdays. Unless there's a holiday, of course. And as far as the best months to visit, try not to visit in March. And the reason why is you're going to have to deal with spring break crowds pretty much every day of the week and all month long. And then in June and July, expect larger crowds with a ton of humidity. Though, if you do not mind the heat, August isn't bad since school in Florida starts earlier than most places. And one last thing, please do not try to visit the week between Christmas and New Year's. The parks in Florida are always packed that week. And for a more in-depth breakdown as to when to visit a Florida theme park, then you need to watch this helpful video. Seriously, planning your vacation during the wrong time can make your trip be filled with frustration and stress, and I don't want that for you. How many days do I need? You really cannot experience everything Busch Gardens Tampa offers in just one day. It's almost impossible. So I do recommend spending at least a day and a half if you could. I also recommend looking into the combo ticket that includes the park's water park Adventure Island, which is located right across the street from Busch Gardens Tampa and is the perfect place to cool off during a hot summer day. Busch Gardens Tampa isn't home to just amazing animals. The park also boasts one of the best roller coaster lineups in the entire world. To help you plan your time management, here are the coasters that offer the slowest moving lines. Cheetah Hunt. The quickness of this line all depends on if they're operating it with one station or two. If it's just one station, then the line's going to be a lot slower for sure, but don't worry, it's still worth the wait. Just set aside a little bit more time for you to experience this ride. Cobra's Curse. This unique coaster usually has a short line after 5 p.m. That's if you can hold out that long because this coaster is a must ride and it's a ton of fun. Scorpion. Even with one train in operation, you're going to wait anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes for this classic coaster unless you get there first thing in the morning. Sand Serpent. This is a typical wild mouse that you can find at other parks across the world. So if you want to wait in the longer line, go right ahead. But if not, then it's fine to skip this attraction. And if Busch Gardens is open after sunset, then you have to experience some amazing night rides. And here is how I rank the must ride coasters at night. Number five, Montu. Number four, Cheetah Hunt. Number three, Kumba. Number two, Shikra. And number one, Iron Gwazi. But I would trade in night rides on every coaster at the park for only one on Iron Gwazi. Seriously, Iron Gwazi at night is something that you have to experience if you can pull it off. And I recommend riding in the very last car. Trust me when I say this, it's an experience that's going to blow your mind.
What should you be wearing while you're visiting Busch Gardens Tampa? Now, it's always a good idea to wear light clothing, comfortable shoes, and a hat. I also recommend bringing some sunscreen. But if you are wondering what I wear at the parks when I visit, then you have to check out my collection of affordable coaster merch that I designed myself. Where are the best places to stay while visiting Busch Gardens? You will find numerous hotels located within a few miles from the park that offer a Google rating of four out of five stars or better. My rule of thumb is this, before you book, be sure to check out the recent or the newest reviews of that hotel, just to make sure the hotel is still offering a quality stay. I recently stayed at the Holiday Inn Tampa North that is located one mile from the park and I highly recommend it and I'm going to stay there the next time I'm in town to ride Iron Gwazi at night. How to cool off at Busch Gardens Tampa. Congo River Rapids and the Stanley Falls Flume are the only water rides at the park, but you're gonna find a great kid splash pad that's located in Sesame Street Safari of Fun. But here's a great tip if you're looking for ways to cool off. Just head over to Shikra and stand next to the splashdown element because trust me, you're gonna get drenched from the roller coaster passing by. And you also cannot forget about Busch Gardens Water Park Adventure Island. And you might be wondering, is Adventure Island worth it? And in my opinion, yes. Definitely go to Adventure Island as you're going to find some world class water slides and attractions, plus one of the longest lazy rivers in all of Florida and tons of activities for the little ones. Florida Vacation Advice Busch Gardens Tampa is located just over an hour away from the other Orlando theme parks. So getting down here for a day is totally doable and so worth it. Now if you don't have a car, then check out the free shuttle service that will take you right to the park. All you need is a Busch Gardens ticket. It's that easy. And for your convenience, I'll place the link to the shuttle service in the video's description. Busch Gardens Tampa with kids. Sesame Street Safari of Fun offers a great mix of kid rides, attractions, net climbs, and a great family coaster called Air Grover. Other great things you can do with the kids is seeing the animals in the exhibits plus the shows, especially considering this is Busch Gardens Tampa after all. Are the add-on animal experiences worth it? Yes. You cannot beat the Serengeti Safari Tour. Trust me, this is such a cool experience that you'll never forget. Also, just be sure to check out the minimum age requirement for some of these experiences. Busch Gardens Tampa Seasonal Events The park offers some amazing events throughout the year, like the delicious Food and Wine Festival, the must-see Hollow Scream, and all of the holiday lights and entertainment during Christmas Town. During the summer, the park stays open until 10 p.m. for their awesome summer nights event. Can anyone say coaster night rides? Where are the best restrooms? Sometimes your stomach will not get along with you, and if that happens during your day at the Busch Gardens, then here are the top three restrooms that are usually the cleanest that I recommend. Live Entertainment. The Moroccan Theater has many ice skating shows throughout the year, all of which are incredible and should be checked out. Just keep an eye on their website for new entertainment that comes and goes throughout the year. Busch Gardens Tampa Passholder Benefits If you plan on visiting more than one day and the other parks within the SeaWorld Parks, then look into a Platinum Pass. While it's pretty expensive, you'll be able to get a few free tickets for you to use at the park where you purchased your pass. Plus, other great benefits and amazing discounts on food and merchandise, and of course, free preferred parking. You will also find other pass options, so I recommend checking out their website to see the list of all the benefits and pricing. Seriously, Busch Gardens Tampa offers so many great discounts and benefits with the pass, it's worth checking out. Now it's time to reveal my Busch Gardens Tampa plan of attack and my Iron Gwazi secret. First, arrive at the parking lot tolls 45 minutes before opening. When the park opens, head right to Iron Gwazi. Now note, if you arrive 30 minutes or later after the park opens, Gwazi's line is going to be very long at that time, trust me. This coaster is the closest one to the front gate. So if you get to the front gate 30 minutes before opening and if you walk fast to Gwazi, then you'll be able to ride it without much of a line and then get off and get right back in line for your second ride. 
after your ride or rides on Iron Gwazi, then sprint over to Cheetah Hunt. Next, I would go get in line for Cobra's Curse. Do you notice the trend here? Don't head to one of the park's B&Ms first. Now near the end of the day, the line for Iron Gwazi will usually be shorter, so be sure to check it out before you leave. If you are not going to the park to experience the coasters, then you can still arrive early and head over to the Sesame Safari of Fun. This way, your kids will be able to experience all the kid rides without much of a line. If you get there for park opening, then your kids will be able to experience a lot of the attractions without waiting in long lines. Because trust me, the short waits will not last for long. And if you're just going for the animals or just to walk around, then it's always good to get there early and just go about your day enjoying yourself and seeing all the animals. So those are my recommendations for your next visit to Busch Gardens Tampa. And if you think of any other tips that I did not mention, please share them with me in the comments. And I want to know when is your next visit to Busch Gardens and what are you looking forward to most? Don't forget to share that with me in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to smile today, think positive, and keep riding coasters.